Hello, we are going to discuss the tight binding method now. The tight binding method is essentially the linear combination of atomic orbitals in within periodic boundary condition in case of solids. Since it is the linear combination of atomic orbitals for solids, we must have the Bloch condition satisfied. Otherwise, it is very similar to what we have done for a linear chain of hydrogen atoms. So, here also in the context of tight binding method, we are going to first analyze what happens in one dimension and then we will discuss something about uh, more like two or three dimensions. So, if we consider this formalism, the tight binding formalism, we can imagine construction of a crystal from a hypothetical periodic one dimensional sequence of n atoms that are equivalent like hydrogen atoms. So, we can draw the atoms like this. And so on. Let us say this atom is at position 0 and this is the potential axis. This is the x axis, the position axis. The potential would look somewhat like at the atomic site the potential goes sharply down and in between the potential is up. So, the potential looks somewhat like this. And this is repeated because we are considering an infinite solid with uh, we are treating that with periodic boundary condition. And if we say that the electron under consideration has this much energy which we call E A. it has this much energy this site we call t naught this is t1 t2 t3 t4 and so on in this direction it's t minus 1 t minus 2 t minus 3 and so on for each atom we focus our attention on a given local orbital. Let us say the local orbital is denoted as phi a and the corresponding energy is E a which is less than the barrier height as we have drawn here. And phi a is similar to the s orbitals in case of hydrogen atom chain that we have considered, but this in this generic picture we call it phi a. 
Now, it is convenient to represent the crystal Hamiltonian in the basis of these localized functions. So, the basis set can be given as phi A. We write its argument as the, it's the position argument x minus T n. If we have the nth side, then when x equals T n, it, the argument would be 0. So, the that represents the orbital corresponding to that particular site and we form a set of such orbitals such states for varying n that gives us a basis state state for expanding the electronic state single particle state for this solid under consideration we need not be very specific about the hamiltonian at this stage but we need to uh, use the translational symmetry of the lattice in order to be able to get something useful, understand the useful properties of the wave function and the eigenstates. So, here we define the on-site and the uh, hopping terms of the Hamiltonian. We first define the on-site terms phi A argument x minus T n h phi A x minus T n. This we call E naught and phi A x minus T n h phi A x minus T n plus minus 1. This kind of states that represent hopping to the nearest neighbor, we call it gamma and the rest are 0. If it is plus minus 2, plus minus 3 and so on, then we consider no hopping there. So, no hopping beyond nearest neighbors. This is something we assume. Now, for simplicity due to the localized nature of the atomic orbitals, the hopping integrals involved for second and third and subsequent neighbors, we have treated them, we have considered them as zero. So, the value of the interaction energy gamma, this has to be negative in order to form a solid, form a crystal, otherwise it will disintegrate. So, the localized functions phi a, they do not satisfy the Bloch theorem, because they do not satisfy the Bloch theorem and we need a single particle state of the electron in this solid to satisfy the Bloch theorem, we have to construct the single particle state like capital phi, which is a function of k and x. It can be represented as the normalization constant 1 over square root of n times sum over n e power i k t n phi a x minus t n. If we construct the single particle state in the solid this way, if we expand it this way, then what happens? where n is the number of unit cells in the crystal, the, this 
uh, we can show that this satisfies the block theorem the block condition therefore this can be called the block sum how does it satisfy the block condition let's check that if we try to evaluate this quantity phi k x plus t n t m let's say because we want a different index not the same index everywhere if we want to calculate this where t m is m times the lattice constant this would be equal to 1 over square root of capital n sum over n e power i k t n phi a x plus t m minus t n just from this definition here we can write it this way and this quantity can be expressed as e power i k t m sorry 1 over square root of n the normalization constant sum over n e power i k t n minus t m phi x minus t n plus t m this quantity here is nothing but capital phi k x according to this definition in place of t n we have put t n minus t m so that does not change anything essentially that means we obtained that this quantity is equal to the block sum of uh, with argument k x plus t m the capital phi with argument k x plus t m this quantity is equal to e power i k t m phi k x this is the block condition so this kind of construction satisfies the block condition therefore this sum is a block sum we have established that now for simplicity we assume orthonormality of the orbitals centered on different atoms if n is different then these orbitals are orthonormal that's what we assume if that happens then the block sum is also orthonormal so the n capital n number of itinerant uh, block itinerant uh, block sums that can span the hilbert space just like the localized function phi is but the block sums for different k values they cannot mix under the influence of a periodic potential with these understanding the energy dispersion of the band originating from the atomic orbitals let's say we consider the atomic orbitals phi a x minus t n set of these for different values of n the energy dispersion of the bands originating from these atomic orbitals can be given as e as a function of k equals capital phi that is the block sum k x the hamiltonian followed by
phi k x. So this is the on site kind of matrix elements and in the particular case of the matrix element of the Hamiltonian between atomic orbitals we know that this is uh, for the same kind of orbital it is uh, E naught and for different kind of orbitals that is nearest neighbor it is gamma. So, just like we have derived it earlier in the context of linear chain of hydrogen atoms, we can find the energy dispersion relation here exactly that E naught plus twice gamma cosine of K A. Now, this expression clearly shows us that the most elementary level that the n fold degenerate states of the non interacting atoms are smeared and they uh, lead to a bandwidth of twice gamma sorry four times gamma twice gamma here and uh, for for cosine value being plus 1 it's twice gamma being minus 1 it's minus twice gamma so the bandwidth would be four times gamma four times the absolute value of gamma. Now we can expand the cosine in terms of powers of k. If we have small k, we can retain up to second order term not beyond that and we can then write E k as E naught plus twice gamma minus gamma a squared k squared this way. The quadratic term that is this term here can be written in the form h cross squared k squared over twice m star. It is similar to the free electron case while m star is the effective mass that means we are considering electrons as quasi particles with certain effective mass that rep uh, represents the free electron like picture. Um, ignoring the potential that it is subjected to. So, m star can be given as h cross squared over twice gamma a squared. The effective mass is small if the hopping parameter gamma is large and if the hopping parameter is small then the effective mass is large which is uh, obvious if the mass is if the quasi particle is very heavy it cannot hop easily if it is light it can easily hop that's all it says